Ironies of Scientology. Number 2. Hubbard's Wives. In 1933, when Hubbard was 22, he married his first wife, Margaret Grubb, also known as Polly. After a few years the marriage came under strain when Hubbard began spending increasingly long periods in New York in order to be nearer his publishers and fellow pulp writers. Polly suspected that he was having affairs with other women in New York. Eventually Polly found hard evidence of her husband's philandering. It seems Ron had written letters to a couple of girls in New York and left them in the mailbox to be picked up. Polly found them and got so mad that she opened the envelopes switched the letters and put them back in the box. She didn't tell him what she had done until they had been picked up. The couple appear to have patched up their relationship afterwards, as they went on an extended sailing trip to Alaska in July 1938. Three years later Hubbard entered the U.S. Navy for war service, save for a period in 1943 when Hubbard was stationed in Astoria, Oregon, during the tout of the ill-fated USS PC-815. Polly appears to have seen relatively little of her husband. It was clear by the end of the war that the marriage was doomed. She had briefly considered moving to California to be with her husband during his posting there, but refused as she did not want to uproot her children. By this time she had moved in with Hubbard's parents in Bremerton. For his part, Hubbard had moved in with the rocket scientist and occultist Jack Parsons in Pasadena, California and had begun an intense affair with Parsons' girlfriend Sarah Northup. By her own account, Polly did not see Hubbard at all between 1945 and June 1947. On August 10, 1946, Hubbard married Sarah, with whom he had been living for about a year. Polly filed for divorce in Port Orchard, Washington, on April 14, 1947 on the grounds of desertion and non-support, as neither she nor her children were obtaining any support from her absent husband. She had no idea that he had already committed bigamy by being married to another woman, nor did Sarah know until then, about Polly. In 1950, Hubbard started living with Barbara Kay while still married to Sarah. He recruited a bright young PR woman, Barbara Kay, to repair his damaged image. Well, I've always found that it's the mind of a man that is most sexy. He was not really terribly physically attractive. Um, and he had a brilliant mind, no question about that. And I surely thought this was a man who was interested in marrying me and whom I might be interested in marrying. The intellectual attraction turned into an affair, and Barbara stayed with the 40-year-old Hubbard in an apartment in Hollywood. But by now Hubbard had left Polly and was married to his second wife, Sarah. He'd led Barbara to believe the marriage with Sarah was over. It wasn't. It was quite shocking when shortly after moving some of my things into that apartment, suddenly Sarah turned up with the baby and moved in. Hubbard and Sarah finally split up. The divorce became a public sensation. Sarah accused Hubbard of torturing her and declared him insane. Hubbard denounced Sarah as a Russian spy and kidnapped her 13-month-old daughter. Polly evidently saw the headlines and wrote to Sarah to tell her. If I can help in any way, I'd like to. You must get Alexis in your custody. Ron is not normal. I had hoped that you could straighten him out. Your charges probably sound fantastic to the average person, but I've been through it. The beatings, threats on my life, all the sadistic traits you charge, 12 years of it. I haven't asked for anything, but with the money rolling in from Dianetics I had hoped to get enough for plastic surgery for Kay's birthmark. Please believe I do so want to help you get Alexis. Hubbard ended up in Wichita in Kansas and got back in touch with Barbara. He sent me a wire telling me he'd been very ill and said he wanted to marry me. And uh, when I went to Wichita, he um, looked terrible. He had hair down to his shoulders and fingernails were like talons. And I found a note, a very sweet note in my hotel room saying, glad you're here, I love you. 
but I saw that I had a, a man there who had no prospects for one thing, and um, that he had some psychiatric difficulties, and I didn't see much of a light for myself with that sort of individual. So I left. But Hubbard bounced back. He got married for the third time to one of his students, Mary Sue Whip. This marriage lasted, and Mary Sue would become his devoted deputy. Sarah, his second wife, was cleared from his memory, just like an engram. What happened to your second wife? I never had a second wife. I never had a second wife. Polly, Hubbard's first wife, died in 1963. Look how he smiles about it. My first wife is dead. My first wife is dead. Now, let's fast forward to 1977. Hubbard's wife, Mary Sue, and eight other Scientology executives were convicted and sentenced for conspiracy and stealing government documents. Believe it or not, with this resume on marriages, he still wrote several books about marriages and relationships, or how they call it in Scientology, the second dynamic. The footage used for this video was taken from the documentary, Secret Lives which you can watch or download from Xenotv.com. This clip was edited by Anonymous.